Hello and welcome to this bonus episode of the James Kennedy Podcast. That's right, we're dropping some gold outside of season, baby. Now, I know I said I was disappearing off the face of the planet to plow all my time into finishing this goddamn book, but you know, sometimes opportunities come along and you just have to say fuck it. And this is a case in point. And it means that you lucky listeners also get a cheeky extra episode just when you thought it had all gone quiet over here. Well, it's been far from quiet, let me tell you. I have indeed been burying myself deep into writing this new book, but I have also been rehearsing my ass off with the handsome bastards in the James Kennedy and the underdogs juggernaut who will very soon be gracing a stage in literally two weeks from now. And did I mention our acoustic EP which is out on August the 4th? If you're not already on our Spotify, Apple or YouTube pages by now, then do yourself a favor and sign up to all of them and bathe in the knowledge that you're vaguely helping an independent band, but also far more helping an evil multi-million dollar tech company. And who doesn't want to do that? So there's lots coming up at Underdog HQ as we prepare for our upcoming hometown headliner before nipping off to the beautiful Days Festival, where as well as having two full band slots, I'll also be joining some talks and maybe even doing a solo show. Um, so if you're going to be there, make sure you come along and hang out, man. But now, on this bonus episode of the podcast, I think it's time to move on to the guests. And that's right, you heard me right. I said guests, plural, because today we've got not just one, not just two, but three guests on the show. The talented, the brave, and the lovely Manny, Bethany, and Joshua, otherwise known as the ass-kicking, internet-breaking, alt-pop trio, We Three. Now, we did have some transatlantic Wi-Fi gremlins in places, but hopefully it won't detract too much from the listening experience because these guys have got a super interesting story and a ton of stuff coming up, including an awesome, awesome album coming out this very week, as well as a huge international tour. And we get into a whole bunch of stuff in what was a really fun and insightful chat. So before I pass you over, please remember to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to leave your comments and ratings as it's always good to hear your thoughts too. But for now, here it is, my chat with the wonderful We Three. I really hope you enjoy it. James, hi, how are you? There we go, got you. How are you doing, guys? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us, man. What's up? Yeah, oh, pleasure. for having us. We've been looking forward to it. Well, guys, you've been busy, man. I mean, there's so much stuff I want to get into. Um, so many questions, and you've got a load of stuff coming up as well. We're going to get into all that. So I don't want to delve too much into the backstory because you guys have been over that so many times in interviews. But the problem is, <laughs> is that your, your backstory is so damn interesting. So we're not going we're not, we're not to park up on it. But if we could just do like the one minute kind of for those people that don't know you guys yet. If you could just give us the one minute bio of who are we three and so many interesting stuff has happened along your journey so far. Yeah. I mean, for those of you who don't know us, I would say one thing that's very interesting is we are three siblings. Um, and we have been in a band for 10 plus years. We forget the number. We probably I always think you're going to say, and we've been siblings since. We've been siblings <laughs> for 10 plus years. <laughs> the last um, five years, it's always been 10 years. Yeah. Been I know. I'm just saying four now. Yeah. We've been in a band for a while, like when we actually started this. Uh, but we had the opportunity to go on America's Got Talent uh, back in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think. And um, super, super cool. We never thought that would be something that we would do at all. Um, but the opportunity just kind of presented itself. We went on the show. They seemed to like it. We made it to the semifinals. We gained a huge following and just kind of continued to push from there. So we really do owe a lot to America's Got Talent. It really mm-hmm. propelled us into our career today. Um, and then after that, we got to work with some, we've been able to work with some great team members um, and release, <clears throat> gosh, we're, we're on our fifth project now, our fourth uh, album and a bunch of singles and yeah, just getting to do kind of living the dream. It's, we're kind of, we pinch ourselves almost every day. It's like, this is, this is pretty rad. So it's insane, man. I mean, like your your fan base and the love you guys got on your socials and online and everything is completely justified, but it is of a different level, isn't it? I mean, what do you guys attribute to that connection that you've got with your fans? I mean, I don't think, I mean, there's loads of people that have been on, you know, TV reality shows and stuff like that. I mean, we've got our versions of it over here as well. But I mean, most people then you don't hear them, hear of them after that, but you guys have just been propelled into like a different level. And like I said, the, the level of love that you've got with your fan base is is very like special and unique, isn't it? What do you attribute that to? So sweet, she said. Yeah. No, I mean, I think we didn't want to disappear after the show. Nobody wants to disappear after the show. Yeah, and but, that's all um, we had seen. So yeah, we were, like, we no. were definitely aware of yeah. that. And so we saw the show as more of just a tool not trying to downplay it, but that wasn't like our goal. So we weren't very, even very starstruck when we were on there. It was just kind of like, no, 
this is to the next so that we can get to the next phase but um and that's was, what that's what simon said yeah. actually that's yeah. he said this is a platform so there's a lot of hard work there were ups and downs and there's still ups and downs and there's gonna be in the future <laughs> but um the fans really we didn't realize what kind of a fan base we had for the longest time because you know this is our first fan base <laughs> <laughs> and so um we just really didn't know um but the more we traveled the more shows we played and you know we we go um, across the pond, play shows and spots we'd never been. And the fans were so consistent everywhere we went. The energy was yeah. the same. And then we would have people um, at the venues start to talk about our fans. That's really what I started yeah. to know yeah. is they would come up and just be like, you have one of the most energetic fans, like passionate fans, but so respectful, yeah. so kind. But yeah. they also are ready to have a good time. They're like, I don't really see this very often. Yeah. And so I don't know why we have uh, brought them to us, but we're, we're not going to stop whatever yeah. it is because we really do love them. Yes. So that's the best answer I can give you because I, I, they, they inspire us to keep working. Oh, yes, yeah. they're lovely. lovely. We just they're put really out, good. we put out music that, um, that makes us nervous on yeah. the regular. And um, from the beginning, I think the first couple songs that we did that with, their response kind of just showed us. Oh, okay. So this is what. First of all, they want from us and we can do this and they're going to receive it. And so it's just kind of, it's very symbiotic relationship. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The honesty means a lot uh, and it goes a long way. And I think that we just realized, wow, a lot of us just feel the same way. Like we relate in a lot of things. We have the same struggles um, no matter what side of the pond you're on. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's pretty astounding. They, they check in on us frequently too just you know they haven't heard if we haven't been on socials or whatever for a while we get messages saying hey just checking in are you okay like, okay thanks so yeah. sweet i think it's just the it's the similar energy that is going back and forth we're giving it to them they're giving it back to us and that naturally just kind of expands i think if you have that that good supportive energy our concerts feel a lot like there yeah i would say yeah that's what it feels like that's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, I, I've got... Uh, it's pretty difficult, I think, when you're in the middle of a tsunami um, to kind of... to appreciate it because you're in it, you know? But I would say that um, looking in as a spectator, you know, it's like I think that not... You know, obviously, the music kicks ass and the band is awesome. But I think, like Josh, you said bravery, um, I think, and, and openness and honesty. And I think that is a massive part of it because your lyrics are so raw and open and honest and they touch on themes that everyone goes through in some form or other and you do it without any sugar coating and you know you're laying yourselves bare and i think that when you do that and you let yourself be vulnerable as bethany said you know it's like it's so much more relatable and real isn't it you know what i mean and 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 that makes people then they just they stick to that they gravitate to that because they know that you're not lying to them and they know that you're speaking their truth as well as your own and i think your lyrics are awesome guys as well as the music of course you know but i mean you deal with some pretty heavy going subjects man without without messing around you know you know, it's unintentional, but life's kind of heavy, isn't it? So we're going to talk about those things. And so, um, but yeah, like you said, it's scary every single time. I made a rule um, a while back where if I show people a new song, the it has to make me uncomfortable to share it with them, to like have them listen to the lyrics that I'm saying. And if it doesn't, it usually means I'm not being honest enough, not being vulnerable enough. I need to dig a little bit deeper. Love it. And are the lyrics all like 100%, you know, from direct personal experience or is there some fiction in there as well? Uh, yeah, I would say 99%. Like, you know, there might be, I think there's a song that was on our record that was like storytelling, but uh, no, 99% of it is all true, true story stuff that we're going through. Well, wow, that's incredible. I mean, I, I love the lyrics personally. I mean, they, they really stand out to me. And they, there's a ton of uh, stuff on the, on the new record that I want to talk about in terms of um, the lyrical content. But we'll come on to that in, uh, in a second. First, I want to talk about the making of the new album. Because, I mean, you know, you guys are at an interesting juncture in your uh, journey now. I mean, you're at a point in your career where you are like fully yourselves doing your own thing on your own terms. So what was the process like of making this record? You know, did you enjoy it? Was it arduous? Was it quick and easy i mean uh, tell, tell us about the background to making this new record one thing i think that was cool is uh, there's a producer that we started working with two records ago and so with this one i feel like we started working with him like early and i think that's one thing that changed 
that I think was really uh, just added a new depth and a new level and just a lot more fun. Yeah. Um, he actually yeah. got to fly out here. He was in the studio and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we made the whole thing right over there. <laughs> oh, wow. In, in my little studio. Um, but uh, this one was slightly unique for me because yeah. it almost – uh, we weren't planning on making a record as a songwriter. You know, you have a back catalog of just hundreds and hundreds of songs, songs you forgot about. And that's kind of where I was. I wasn't at the point of like putting a record together. And then all of a sudden our management was like, I need a record like now. And I was, I got freaked out and I started writing a bunch. And I remember both of <laughs> you were like, no, you have songs. Let's yeah. go through the catalog. And so this is almost like, yes, there were songs written after and stuff like that that are on there, but it's almost a lot of like that catalog stuff, which was kind it of ironic. Like four finished, so yeah. yeah. So then I got to finish it. And um, then like you're saying, had a producer come out and he finished the entire record in two weeks. He came out. I mean, I had a lot of it recorded and mm-hmm. stuff, but then he came out and we both sat down for two weeks yeah. straight and um, just banged out 18 songs. Jesus Christ. His, his, his his demos are less and less demos. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that's insanity. Two weeks. My God, you're putting us all to shame, guys. <laughs> was, that's that's uh, Bill Zimmerman. He is so fast. He's a ninja on the computer. Some, some of the stuff that he does is like wild. Yeah. I think I'm fast on logic and stuff. <laughs> and then I see him go and it's like, <laughs> so, but yeah, it was a very cool experience. Very different than all the other yeah. yeah. But then it still came together. Um, conceptually, yeah, I just ended up, there were so many songs that, you know, yeah. didn't end up making it. And then the ones that did, we just keep finding reasons why they're supposed to be on this sense. project together. This one, in my opinion, I don't know, there's something, it, it didn't necessarily feel amazing making this record. I'm not going to lie. It was mm-hmm. really stressful. We weren't in like the best space to put it together. It was a hard one to like feel good during it type of a thing. But we just kind of trusted the songs and just trust the timing of shit and why it's supposed to be there, whatever. Yeah. But now just, yeah, the project in of itself and how people are responding just to teasers of things. Yeah. Um, well, because we've been sitting with these songs for yeah. <clears throat> some of them almost two years. Like there was like a chorus mm-hmm. or something like that. Or, and so you, you get numb to it and you don't really know. And so it's hard to actually decide, is this good or is this bad? Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of had to just let go and let the process happen and just the vetting process of which songs make the record. And um, usually when we do that and just kind of let go, we, just we want it to be music. organic it and always, just trust the process. It always yeah. works out. So yeah. starting to tease these songs, uh, it's feeling like that process worked and uh, Again, made the right decision. So. Yeah. But it's always a gamble. You flip a coin every single time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've heard the record. I'm lucky enough to have uh, been sent a private link to hear the record. And I can say it is absolutely killer, guys. Oh, straight, out, straight out the gates. The first track, I was like, my jaw was on the fucking floor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. first one. Woo. Thank you to church a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> it grabs you by the fucking throat. <laughs> Pins you up against the wall and says, you are going to listen to this fucking record, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah, but the whole record is a ride, man. I mean, like you know, there's a the whole range of human emotion is on that record. You know, the good, the bad, the fun, and the ugly. And you know, before you know it, you're at the end. You know, and you want to do the whole ride over again. You know, it is a really, uh, it is a real roller coaster. Thank you so much. Wow, that, that means, really a lot. means a lot. Yeah. And how did you find, because I do, um, I recorded my last album in this very room as well, just like you guys were describing. I do all my stuff at home as well. How do you find that process? Do you prefer doing it that way? Or do you prefer being able to go somewhere that's kind of neutral, where someone else kind of takes care of, of a lot of the legwork, and then you can go home, and when you're home, you're home? Or do you prefer to kind of do it at home? Personally, I prefer doing it at home because I'm not having to watch the clock if I want to go up stairs halfway through the movie and tinker with something i can do that do you find that or do you prefer the separation um when i'm i feel like when we're like making the songs themselves and actually like coming up with the ideas and beginning processes for lack of better phrase, demos um i i have to be in like this space like a home space where i can like you said go run go do whatever i'm not you know on someone else's timeline um but then that started to give me anxiety as well then once you get to the end of the process it feels so good to not <laughs> hand it over but know that you're not the last hands touching it yeah. and like having someone else who's better than you at everything and come in and like tweak 
correct things and getting other creative input. Well, they're just so close. Yeah. So, so close. And so it's hard. Yeah. How do you, well, just like you said, you're in the middle of the tsunami. Um, How do you know what's going on? And so having those outside, yeah, is really helpful. It's hard to find people that you trust though with your, your um, art. So it does, it's a trial and error sometimes finding it, but uh, Bill is an amazing guy and uh, he really gets the vision and it's so much fun bringing in these songs. He still is able to like take them somehow and make them so much better. Like you see them as finished. Mm -hmm. So. And he's such a, like a calming presence too. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, boom, 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 and all of a sudden he's just like super calm while he's doing yeah. it, doing all this amazing stuff. Like, okay, bro. Yeah. And how does it work with the sibling dynamic? I'm super interested in that because my brother was in my band for about two weeks and we just wanted to fucking destroy each other. It just didn't work <laughs> at all. But I mean, how does it work with you guys? I mean, is that the key to your success and why you've been, you're still kicking it, you know, 10, five years later, you know, whatever it is. Um, d- does it add a certain friction that you guys need or is it the sibling bond and the sibling love that kind of is, is the, the thing that makes it all work? What's the spark? We don't, there's no friction. Yeah, we, we get along all the time. Like, sarcasm, sarcasm, <laughs> losing. Uh, no, no. It's, it can be pretty shit. Yeah, it can be pretty shit. Um, but we, <laughs> no. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Okay, next question, next question. I'm trying to decide how honest I <laughs> You No, 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 it's great, it's great. I was uh, filtering and then I decided not to yes. filter. No, it's good. It, um, we, we found a process. It was yeah. really horrible. Like, really, really horrible. Um, and just hard because we all are our own artists and stuff like that. And it was difficult to figure out a way to make it work because we all know how to push each other's buttons too. Hmm. Um, but now it's almost, it's less that we like songwrite all together, stuff like that. We each kind of have our own jobs within We Three and stuff like that. Right. So I do a lot of the songwriting. Dasha does a lot of the live stuff. And Bethany does a lot of the social media. It doesn't mean that we're not involved in all um, but once it gets to the end, that's when it gets kind of crazy. It's, uh, we all start to throw in our like two cents <laughs> at the end. It's like, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I'm like, well, I started at the beginning, and then, <laughs> and then the fights break out. <laughs> but, <laughs> we're still here, though. We are yeah, still we here. Can. Yeah. I feel like it should be a lot worse. It's actually pretty fun. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think it gets better and better over time. Um, we respect what each of us are yeah, good at. Yeah. Too. And yeah. I think it's starting to become more fun to like collaborate because we, I don't know, I feel like we've, we've gotten through a lot of, it's been a lot of years since we've been doing this. Yeah. So it's wild how like a lot of the collaboration processes are, we're just understanding each other more. Um, no one, one person needs to take a break. Like right now, a massive process is like, rather than being in the same room, if like you're writing a song and you want to like work on stuff, it's like FaceTimes every 10 minutes. Like, okay, how do you do oh, this yeah, next thing, this next yeah. thing? Yeah, and that's like they yeah. just the processes keep changing. The other day, I Facetimed her. I was writing a song, <laughs> and uh, her husband was sitting in the room. And I don't remember what line it was, but he was like, "What if you had like this?" Because well, he heard guy? it like he yeah. called me like twenty times at night, and I was like, oh, "We got to pause the show." He's writing a really good song right now. I was like, "This time, this time." He's like, "I have an idea." Yeah, and I just hear him in the back of the, from the corner of the room. He's like, what if you just did like a big choir? God damn! In the back, and I was like, "Let me try it." So I was on Facetime, recorded it. And it sounded awesome. And Luke so was like, Luke, yeah! Luke's definitely going to get credit. <laughs> so it changes. It does. Yes. yes. All yes. Yes. That was an awesome recovery, guys, from a kind of a, a three-way... <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> took, a little, took a little bit there. We stumbled, but we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whatever you're doing, it's clearly working for you, so keep doing it. If you've got that little bit of friction there that, that, that you need to, to like the furnace, then uh, I'm sorry, guys, you're going to have to keep doing it for the rest of us. Because like I said, the new record kicks ass. And given the title of the record, Love Me, I wanted to ask you guys, is there a thread or a theme that runs through the record? And what are some of the issues that you guys are tackling on this album? I mean, the thread that goes, I mean, it's the obvious one, but um, the idea of loving yourself a bit also uh, the just the phrase love me is a yeah. thread that's going through this quite a bit in a mm-hmm. bunch of different scenarios because it was a very interesting <laughs> phrase because you can it can be kind of cocky it can be desperate it can be um in love it can be questioning and there's so much and i feel like you kind of get that throughout the record but um some of my favorite topics 
um, our song in therapy is one of my favorites. Um, Cause it's, it really is so honest and raw. And every time I listen to it, I get uncomfortable cause I, I almost uh, wish I would have sugarcoated it more. So I don't have to be as, you know, not everybody knows all my business and shit, but that's um, just kind of the idea of dealing with your demons in relationships and then getting out of those relationships and realizing that the demons that you were struggling with in the relationship were still there before. And there's a million different things. Well, I think, Absolutely. The concepts from current to uh, like we, we talked about some of these songs were like back catalog songs um, that found their way here. And it does talk about, I mean, childhood stuff um, growing up in, we, we touch on a, a lot of religious stuff and experiences within that. Um, and then how that manifests itself into like current day. And yeah. the, the thread is like, you know, love me, which is so wild that that literally appears so many. Yeah. yeah. There's even places in the record that I, when I'm listening, oh my God, you say it there too, that I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. realize and like the concept is fluid. So, but yeah. Um, and the other thing yeah. that I found was the love songs. There's not a stereotypical love song on it, yeah. kind of unintentionally. It's, um, again, it's, it's like a question mark. It's yeah. like, it is, I adore you, but this is really hard and this is toxic and like I still love you but this is really difficult so there's almost it's like questioning love songs a lot of unsettlement in this record there's not just a song where you sit down and just talk about how much how beautiful this is and perfect it is that wasn't intended at all which I think is Um, wrong yeah and when I think you know you asked for like a clear answer and I think the all the (laughs) different things I think that's exactly what's going on it's like we don't really know um we're like the more that we talk about it, the more interviews we have, we're we like process it as we're talking. So there's a lot in this record that we don't know how to explain necessarily. It's just uh, it's it's very like happening almost in real time for us, I feel like. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I think that was that was a great uh, the way you, you conceptualize that then because it, it is a mixed bag and there is a lot of self-discovery and self-reflection that goes on in there and um, a lot of self-empowerment as well, which I think a lot of people are going to get through i mean i know that that's quite a common thread in a lot of the previous stuff that you guys have done as well because you do talk very openly about some tough subjects such as um on this record in particular you know we got child abuse you know uh, in church tough one but brave brave as hell that you guys did that and much respect you for doing it the way you did it as well you know it must be tough to uh to sing that you know every night you know but um props to you for doing it um you know sexuality gender identity uh, mental health suicide you know some some tough subjects and i know that you do have a lot of resonance with the lgbt community um how what is what is the situation with that in the states at the moment in the u.s it's not that great over here right now how is it how are things looking on that issue over there I think the wild thing right now about these songs, which again is like, we just, we very much so have been proven to ourselves to not overthink what we put out to trust the songs because it's been crazy just with the timing of releasing things, the timing. I think people might look at our project right now and be like, well, that was very intended and planned and it's why it wildly wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, And the conversations, which to me, some, there's a, there's some songs on this record that are really hard and they're going to be hard to sing and they're, it's going to be hard to put out. And it, I do lose a little bit of sleep at times, hoping that it's going to be helpful. Not going to lie. Um, but we've been validated over and over with, um, even just in conversations with my friends recently that are just talking about what's happening in America right now. And the conversations about yes, child abuse, the conversation about how people are being excommunicated from, um, communities, communities because yep. of their sexual orientation and identity. Um, uh, yeah. you know, minority groups right now that are being blamed for things that they should not be being blamed for. And it's, um, yeah, we, we hope to do what we know how to do, which is put music out that's honest. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's very organic how this is happening, but we are happy to in any way help and, um, yeah, just lift up people that need a lot of extra love right now. Yeah. So yeah, it's a tough time over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, in that realm but we're yeah this record we hope is just going to give people a place to go to and yeah feel a little bit less alone. i know it sounds cliche but 
Oh, it'll 100% do that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you, you don't leave any stone unturned on this record. I mean, there's a lot of personal introspection and social reflection and uh, tackling some pretty taboo subjects as well, like I said, without <laughs> with zero sugarcoating. Um, but I don't want to give people, I think it's important to point out at this point, I don't want to like, misrepresent the record. I want to let people know as well at this point that um, it's not. It, it, this is a fucking fun record as well. Like I said, it's, it's, a, roller coaster. it's a full range of the human experience. It's a, it's a great, fun listen. And everything you, you'd expect from the band, you know? But moving away from the record just for a second, I want to backtrack a little and ask you guys what your experience was like of the music industry when you went out into it face first after being the semi-finalists on America's Got Talent and gaining all that huge exposure and pressure and a huge platform. I can just imagine that you were probably swamped by every cigar-chomping, money-rinsing shark in the game. But I might be wrong. I mean, what was your uh, experience of the industry? Was it, was it more of a positive one, or was it the old cliche? I feel like it. our, our experience was pretty, in, in one sense, was pretty good. Like, like the team that we had around us um, was really helpful, and we felt free to be able to do what we wanted to do. Um, I think where it got difficult is... We were the the show because they can only tell so, it's just such a short time. So they can only tell so much of your story. And so they really focused on a particular part of our story. And so that's what the world knew us as in this, this one angle. And so trying to share more of who we are and more of our story, that's where it kind of got difficult. We had to do some rebranding. So it wasn't so much the music industry, I don't feel like, but it was more of like the, like the social side of it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How would you describe yeah. that? I think we went in, yeah, intentionally. Like, we definitely had a team around us right when we got off the show. We had massive attention. We were given a massive headline tour immediately afterwards. Um, a lot of it was just like scrapping, getting it together, and just like, we're going to do what we got to do to keep ourselves propelling after the show. Um, but yeah, the biggest hurdle that we had to come to was the rebranding of how we were portrayed. Yeah when people came to our shows they thought they were going to get a very specific version and then realized oh they talk about this stuff in there okay that was pretty hard to disappoint so many we did people disappoint a lot. So long. <laughs> but yeah. um i think it was so worth it because yeah. the idea of having to like still be in that little box sounds yeah. pretty i don't terrifying. think we would be here i don't think uh, we'd be able to do it so it, it took a lot of a lot of hard work and uh we went through some huge bouts of uh depression in those times because the you know, followings went down. We had to work hard to keep it going. And, uh, but then it just slowly, you find, you find that, that niche, you find that new fan base and just keep working and just keep true to what your music is saying. Yeah. I find that so interesting, man, because I've never done anything like that. So I just can't imagine what it could be like, because I've just always been an independent artist and I'm always, you know, raising the flag for, um, you know, independent artists and stuff like that oh, and doing yeah. things that way. Um, but I mean, I've just, I can't imagine being on such a huge platform like that and then going out into the industry, you know, like what that must have been like. And it's, you, know, you imagine when you're on my side of the fence, that, like cynically that, oh, well, you know, every door must be open for those guys now. It must be so easy and all the success that follows must be like unearned somehow, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I do know that that's not the case. And then to hear you talking about the depression you faced and the depression and the struggles and the, the, the social dynamic changes and everything that happened as a result of that sort of thing. Not only is that, I think, quite ubiquitous and quite universal because so many people say the same thing, but I, oh, it's interesting that it's so contrary to the projection of, of TV shows like that, isn't it? You know what I mean? Where they make it look like it's just all glamour and you're living the dream when, you know, behind the scenes, a lot of the, the struggle and the work ethic and the toll it takes on you personally and in your personal lives is kind of, it's kind of kept from public view, isn't it? It's true. Well, yeah, I think it's... there was a, a huge, like, distance. When we were on the show, like, TikTok wasn't what it is now, and yeah. there was a big, like, veil between the two worlds. <laughs> now, if you go on a show like AGT, I will watch it, but I will immediately go to their social media and be like, what's their experience? How are they doing? Yeah. They literally can post everything and give you such a more insight into the experience, yeah. which is, mm -hmm. and that's changed in the last three years. So, it, it is a constant different world, which I keep hoping gives yeah. artists more control. Yes, um, yes, yes. Not necessarily saying it's, it's always easier, but at least, you know, more yeah. say in who they are and what they're doing yeah. on social media. Is but it's hard because, yeah, the artists, there is that opportunity to have the artists get more control, but then it's a responsibility as well. Yeah. Man, it can be such a pain if, if those are, if you don't have that skill set um, to be, to have to 
produce that sort of content. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we've really been grateful that there's three of us because we get to kind of each take the the lead on certain things. Like Manuel and I hate doing a lot of social Uh, media stuff. Like uh, we just don't like posting on our own very much, but Bethany is really good at it. And she's like, boom, okay, you guys are going to do this. You're going to do this. this." (laughs) But we've got to give, in that case, we've got to give a massive shout out to Bethany for the evil genius behind your guys, social media gear, because man, (laughs) you guys are crushing it on social media. Well, Uh, it starts with the songs. I well, can't do that unless the songs are there. So. Very diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she crushes it. Every you know, most days, and I'm always like, oh, God. I have an idea! <laughs> I always have to get the right mindset. I always do it. I always tell you to like come after like a bad coffee yeah. so I can be on energy level. Mm. Or else I'm like, I just can't. You've been beating my energy level lately. Really. Wow! Yeah, like, I, mean, I gotta get these TikToks, and I'm just like, yes. The other day, the other day, he was like, uh, she, she was, she wanted to go do something else. So she, just you were distracted with something, and uh, Manuel's like, no, hey, can we get that other video? Remember, you wanted to do that one. He like kept like four times. He like brought her back to like finish this, and she's like, oh, that was really great. And then, yeah, and then afterwards, he's like, it's actually just because I wanted to get out of this. <laughs> I wanted to get back in my pajamas. <laughs> it was all. Good. Awesome. Whatever it takes. Whatever. It takes. Well, it would be remiss of me if I didn't take advantage of this opportunity to ask you then, what tips would you give as someone who has been so goddamn successful on social media? Um, what would you give to all the other fledgling artists who are out there, exactly like Josh described, thinking, I, I don't know what to do. I can't be bothered. I- I'd rather be playing my guitar. You know, I got other things to be doing. How the fuck do I squeeze this in? And-, and how do you get heard above the noise of everybody else on the planet who is also on Instagram and Facebook? I mean, you know, I'm sure that like, um, there's got to be some element of evil genius in there because I do, uh, you know, all the things you're supposed to do on social media and get fucking nowhere apart from being shadow banned so um what bones of wisdom might you be able to throw down to the rest of us to help us out a little bit yeah i mean i don't mind i feel like just it sounds dumb but it works like copying whatever if, it, if it, you see someone that does something they post a song in a certain way and it works and you're like just do that, that. feels organic to me I yeah, can do that. yeah just do that like try to yeah. find someone who's close Cause yeah. it's you. You're not going to be copying. It's just, it's just yeah. That's my best answer. I think um, really like social. Media. I think it's so um, mentally. It can be like the most defeating thing because it is so important now. So I I always tell myself start from a pre- place of creativity. So if you are drained as fuck and you're like not able to think of concepts, then don't. Like take literally like That's start cool. from a like you have to start from a place where you feel excited and inspired by what you want to create. And if that takes more time, that takes more time. So people are gonna see through that. Yeah, they, if they are. See through it. Yeah, if you're like faking it yeah. when you're really tired. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Find ways that you can find enjoyment out of it. So like, and that might be you coming up with a very new concept that nobody else is doing, but you're like, this is what I could do that I would enjoy making at least to a certain percentage. Just yeah, find. Clearly, you have to find like a way to make it an art form. If you hate it, you have to find a way to where you don't. It comes from a place of like creativity, um, and then you just be consistent with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the evil genius thing is like anytime there's a song that comes around, like lyric, I'm like, oh my god, that would be so good on TikTok. So we're always thinking of like how would this immediately transfer, even if the song's not finished yet. Yeah. So immediately, like visually, how <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that's not out yet he just gave away his song yeah. <laughs> i know but literally like there's certain songs where we're just like oh my god before it's even finished or even considered a good song we're like that would do so yeah, well I, yeah, I love it i thought the exact same thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> james is like bring that's it on so cool. we just got an exclusive a <laughs> podcast exclusive so good. Oh, god. oh man mommy <laughs> oh, so. no, that's some great tips that's some great tips I know a lot of people a lot of artists listen to this will, will really appreciate that and I'll try and incorporate some of it myself uh, as somebody who absolutely detests social media and having to get off my ass and relentlessly make videos and pictures of myself uh, I will try and find the fun in it so thank you for that and I think well I think what he said too at, um, that what, what both of them said is great the like finding people who were doing it the way that like interests you and kind of copying that and then yeah finding a way to do it organically 
um, that's something that's that's helped me a little bit. I'm still terrible at doing it by myself, but um, finding yeah content on socials that you like and that really resonates. You're like, well, I, yeah, I can do that, and, and then emulating that because um, then it is more enjoyable. Well, it's more just, organic. Yeah. It's more fun. It's more creative. And you can see it as an art form yes. rather than just a job. Right. It's going to change your mindset. And how do you guys feel about social media and the new model of doing things in the music business? Did you did you guys have any experience of the old model, you know, the pre-MySpace days when it was all CDs in jiffy bags and phone calls and flyers on the street corner and things like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, when it came... We were kind of on the tail end of it. Like, yeah. Because I was like, remember, I was registering everything like CDs. Oh, uh, yeah. That was like oh. a lifetime. Like, right. Yeah, we, we had like all... a brief moment, but it was yeah. very small. And we weren't, I don't think, our scale was—we no. we weren't selling anything. No, and social media wasn't like massive. Yeah. Wait, so mainly, it was the streaming that we've kind of yeah. been involved in. But we got help. Yeah. Do you think it's better now for artists than than it was back in the in the good old days? I feel like there's more. Uh, I was. Just, I feel like there's more opportunity for artists to be in control. Yeah. But with that opportunity become, comes um, kind of a, a lot of work. Um, so there is more opportunity too for people, them to be taken advantage of. So I yeah. feel like what was already there is just kind of like expanded, maybe more so. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a. I mean, there's a balance to it because in in one sense, I'm like every artist, ones that no one would have ever heard of, has an opportunity now, mm-hmm. and that's amazing. But then on the other hand, like Ryan Ferris said, that every single day on Spotify, there's like over 40,000 songs released. Mm-hmm. So he's like, to cut through now, you have to really write the perfect song. You like, don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. And so it's now it's like, well, I guess it, it's, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. I like them both for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think, I don't know, I think weirdly, like, I, I've tried because I can just get sucked into the like, this is what's working. This is how we, you know, the songs they're vibing and how we promote and stuff. But then I really try to sometimes like take a step back and like look up above and be like, okay, this is so weird what we have to do to get songs yeah. out there now. Like it's so weird, but it's like also how can we accept the fact that this is where we're at with the music industry we have to change. play the game how can we find our consistent authentic through line because it's going to change again yeah and that's why like i've got my favorite bands who like they'll play the game to a point but like you see them play the game to a point but they're still themselves through the, the eras of all of the changes and yeah they are still them mm-hmm. their art is just always shines through in the end so that's and a big intention it's like yeah it's here now it's going to change again yeah. and we're going to try to find a way to with it but just stay yeah. nuts. <laughs> and I think in that I, I go back to what, what uh, Manuel said is finding people uh, who are doing what you like and emulate that I mean that goes back to when we first started playing music you know yeah, that's what we do as musicians right you, see, you emulate what they do um, and then you put your own spin on it I think it's exactly the same thing yeah, that's a great point. And you've reminded me, actually, I had a guest on the show um, last year, a guy called Brian Slagle, who's the CEO of Metal Blade Records. So they were um, a heavy metal label who've been around, you know, for over 40 years. They were the guys that discovered Metallica and Slayer. You know, he's, he's been around, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's been around the houses. He, he knows the game. And he was around, you know, kicking it in the old model. You know, and he's still here, you know, kicking ass now in the new model. And I said to him, what's the, what's the key to success? And he said, you've got to have the ability to adapt. He said, you never know when the rug is going to get pulled out of you you might think you're flying now but then you know <laughs> next week it's all going to fucking change so you've got to have the uh, constant ability to just adapt and roll with the tide you know and then don't waste your you've got precious energy so in my opinion spending too much energy on hating where we're at is That's a waste of energy action. like put it into yeah. this is where we're at figure out how to adapt and stay authentic mm-hmm. and not sell out love it love it it's very love powerful it. of you thank you for <laughs> That's the clip we're going to use, guys, right? (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Right, well, I can't keep you guys all day. I mean, I don't know what time it is over there. It must be like nine in the morning or something like that. So I need to let you guys go and drink some coffee. Um, Before we wrap up, we've got to tell people about the record, man. Love Me is coming out on July the 21st on Palawan Productions. Yeah, man, the record kicks 
ass honestly everyone is going to be so your fans are going to love it and people who haven't yet heard of you guys or heard the record they're going to love it too honestly it was incredible listen thank you for doing it a hell of a roller coaster and i can't wait to come and see you guys when you come to the uk because you were also touring you're doing europe as of yeah. august you're doing you're everywhere you're doing germany switzerland uh did i see spain as well and then you come into uh, the yeah. uk we're going to give a shout out you're doing newcastle glasgow edinburgh manchester birmingham brighton london and dublin so um <laughs> everywhere wow. in october man are you are you are you, are you excited are you pumped oh, oh down the my yes. god yeah yes. it's been this is one of the longer breaks we've had like about traveling Get we're all getting a little stir crazy mm -hmm. so i'm very 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 excited we're prepping though for this tour we're gonna literally go rehearse after this this is a very exciting show I'm very brand excited. new yeah brand new show uh yeah we're we're putting it all together now just the production everything is coming together it's really exciting oh, i'm so jealous man i haven't told her in a while i'm so jealous <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to come to see you guys. I'm going to try and get to uh, Manchester or London. So I'll, I'll give you guys a, a, a ding okay, on the social sure. media. Great tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Send it over and we'll get you free tickets. Just let us know. Oh, which thank one. you yeah. so much. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that, guys. Of course. And is there anything you want to say to people before we go? I mean, I can give a shout out to your socials. You can catch up with the guys at We3Music on TikTok and Instagram. Not that you need me to plug your socials. But is there anything else you want to say before you go? We love you. Thanks so much for your support. And we hope you love the record. I like saying we hope you love nothing. <laughs> we hope you we love nothing. <laughs> Oh, they're going to, man. Love Me is out on July the 21st. That's this fucking Friday, man. And I can't wait to see how this is received because I, I think it's an excellent record. Thank you so much for doing it. Thanks for doing what you do. Please keep staying true to yourself and doing your thing. And I can't wait to see you guys doing it on stage when you come to the UK in a few months. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I know you're super busy. You've got a lot on at the moment, so I really appreciate you stopping in to catch up. And uh, wish you nothing but the best for the release and everything coming up. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Thank yeah, you. We'll see you in the fall. Thank Thank you. James. Looking Take forward care. to it. Take care, guys. Best wishes. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye-bye. Manny, Bethany, and Joshua from the awesome We Three. Put it together for them, guys. What a lovely bunch of dudes. And I am not lying when I say the album kicks holy ass. Man, it's a banger. It's out in three days' time. So set a reminder or go and subscribe to him on Spotify and the social so you don't miss it when it comes out because if you're looking for something that's going to hit you and, and, and actually mean something and it's going to put the hairs up at the back of your neck and, and speak to you as well as giving you a good fucking time you know, with songs that you're going to want to play over and over again then I've just, I've just fucking done you a solid. I've just told you where to go. <laughs> we three love me out on July the 21st and then also check out where the guys are playing. If they're playing near you do go and see them. These guys are force of nature on stage and i will be at one of the uk shows or maybe several who knows so stay up to date with what they're doing at we three music on tiktok instagram and they're they're all over the place they're all over the goddamn internet if you don't know who they are already what's wrong with you thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed the conversation i know we had a little bit of um signal interference in places i don't know whether that was my end or theirs or whatever the fuck but i mean it was I hope, hopefully it wasn't too disturbing and i hope you enjoyed having a sneaky little bonus episode come out of the blue my podcasting hiatus will resume as of now, only for like a month or two whilst I just bury myself deep into finishing my second book. And then business as usual will commence as promised with a whole roster of awesome guests, which have already been confirmed to come on. I've got some dudes coming on this thing. So if you have not yet subscribed, do it now so you don't miss these episodes when they start flying out every week again. In the meantime, I really hope you enjoy the new We 3 album. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. And if anyone has discovered the band as a result of listening to this podcast episode, then please let me know and let me know what you think of the record. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I love you loads. And I will see you really, really soon. And do not forget, if you want to hang out in person, check out the live shows at jameskennedystuff.com or check out my Instagram page at jameskennedyuk where I'll be plugging the upcoming live shows which will be happening over the next two months and we can share a cold beer in person. Until then, and until next time, thanks again for all your support. Take it easy. I'll catch you soon.